You're listening to Menopause Natural Solutions, Episode 23, Joint Health and Menopause. Welcome to Menopause Natural Solutions, your podcast for all things perimenopause and menopause related. Stay tuned as naturopath Jennifer Harrington explains how to use natural therapies to transform your health and happiness. Hello, how's your day been? I've just had the most amazing day. My day has been full of discovery calls. I love getting the opportunity to talk to women all over the world. It's amazing just how similar we we really are. And today's common theme was loneliness. It's interesting how one day everyone will have one complaint and the next day it will be a totally different issue. But loneliness comes up a lot. And this is one of the reasons I created my online retreat. So we have a place where we can all come together. But anyway, back to the discovery call. I wanted to make sure you guys were aware that if you wanted to chat to me, you can. I offer complimentary discovery calls via Skype or the phone. So I'll put a link to my scheduler in the show notes. And if this interests you, I look forward to personally chatting with you soon. Okay, today we're going to be talking about joint health, well osteoarthritis in particular. Osteoarthritis was once thought of as a disease of wear and tear alone. Today there is increasing evidence that estrogen influences the health of our joints and may be a contributing factor towards the development of osteoarthritis in at-risk individuals. It is thought that oestrogen plays a role in the maintenance of articulate tissue and of the joint itself, and it does this by reducing inflammatory cells from building up in the synovial fluid surrounding the joint. And it's these inflammatory cells that start to damage the joint when they are left unchecked. There are some other factors that put you at higher risk of of joint issues, and these include being overweight, as this increases joint wear and tear, especially of the weight-bearing joints such as the knees, the ankles, the hips. Having diabetes increases your risk, as this is another inflammatory disease. Being inactive. We all know the old saying, use it or lose it, and this certainly fits here. But there's also the other side of the story, and that is overuse of isolated joints, things like repetitive strain injury. And you may have heard of conditions like tennis elbow or golfer's elbow, and and these are conditions where that one isolated joint has been used too frequently. Um, It could also have been you're at increased risk because of a previous incident, uh, a fall or an accident that has impacted on particular joints. And uh, the final one might be a new factor that you haven't even considered before, and that is infections, that certain infections are linked with joint breakdown, uh, such as staphylococcus, streptococcus, gonococcus, and even viruses like Epstein-Barr have... um, have been found to increase joint breakdown. So if your joints are starting to flare, I highly recommend you find yourself a team of local practitioners. I personally use a combination of chiropractic, acupuncture and massage. However, osteopathy, physiotherapy and exercise physiology could also be beneficial. And I cannot emphasize the need for good and regular physical therapy. I still go when I'm not in pain because I want to maintain my feeling of wellness. Prevention certainly is better than a cure. Let's just have a quick chat about diet because diet also plays a role in joint health. Um, I like to encourage you to have additional beneficial fats such as those found in seafood, eggs, coconut, olive oils, these all help to lubricate the joint from the inside and helps to prevent wear and tear. 
But these beneficial oils are also anti-inflammatory. Uh, they can help reduce the buildup of inflammation uh, causing substances. When we're looking at inflammatory foods, you can't go past turmeric. Turmeric, ginger, these are fantastic foods. But unfortunately, uh, turmeric is really poorly absorbed. So I often add it as a supplement just to enhance its ability. And uh, obviously, when we're talking about diet, we can't go past water. Uh, and because dehydration exacerbates everything, including joint pain. So make sure you're, you're drinking plenty of water. If we're to move on to supplements, the, the use of beneficial fats is so important that I would use fish oil. I would actually take a supplemental oil product. Um, I'm really looking for something that's high in EPA. Uh, which is a constituent of fish oil that is highly anti-inflammatory. I would also consider vitamin C. But if I'm looking at a natural source of vitamin C, I particularly like rosehip. Rosehip is a natural source of vitamin C that also contains GOPO. And this is an ingredient that has been, it's got over decades of research on it, specifically with joint health. And uh, it's very good at reducing joint inflammation. We've got all our favorite anti-inflammatory herbs. And here are my favorite. Turmeric, boswellia, ginger, cat's claw, devil's claw. Love them. And I tend to use actually a combination to get the, the best result. And also probiotics. Yes, probiotics. There is research linking dysbiosis to joint pain. So guys, I hope that's given you some ideas today. Our joints are really, really important. I personally want to be running around with my grandkids and my great-grandkids and my great-great-grandkids. And in order to do that, I need to look after my joint health so that I, I can do that. And I want that for you as well. So guys, exercise, Go and find yourself a local team so that you can get some chiropractic or acupuncture or osteopathy, whatever um, you can find in your local area. Look around with your diet. We want lots of water, lots of good fats. And with supplements, consider, as we mentioned, the fish oils, vitamin C, anti-inflammatory herbs and probiotics. I hope that's been helpful for you today. Um, I haven't had very many reviews lately, so hopefully you're still enjoying the podcast please let me know. Um, I, I really do love to hear from you. It encourages me to, to keep going. Um, all the feedback I had on the discovery calls today was fantastic, but I haven't had anything through the podcast for a while. So guys, um, I hope you're loving it. Let me know. And until next week, bye. Thank you for listening to Menopause Natural Solutions. This podcast contains general information about menopause. It is provided as a guide and is not intended.